Long story short, I have to learn a Native American language over the weekend out of spite because I have a bone to pick with a professor here. Good morning, everyone. So I'm in the most interesting of pickles right now. You see, I run the Spanish tutoring program around here. It's called Spanish Triangle. And every quarter, because we go by quarters instead of semesters, I give a very informal, chill Spanish crash course to those going on Latin American IQ. I should explain what that is. Uh, my school is really big on doing engineering projects off campus. They're called IQPs. And a good number of those are in Latin America. So every quarter, I give a Spanish crash course to those going to Latin American IQP sites before they go. And right now, we're in the third quarter. It's, it's uh, the, the turn for those going to Paraguay in the fourth quarter. So I find out who's in charge of the Paraguay site, and I happily email the guy, Hey, I'm Gilbert. I run Spanish Triangle. Spanish crash course for your students. What do you say? Can I go to your class and promote it? Oh yeah, I should, I should also mention that uh, before um, we go to our uh, IQP sites, we usually have a, a class that's dedicated to how to write reports. And all your classmates will be joining you on that off-campus project. It's called ID2050. So Sonny says, uh, thanks Gilbert, but the thing is, uh, knowing Spanish is a requirement for this particular IQP site. So I think that's perfect because I could finally do this without talking at a fucking Dora the Explorer level. I could reframe this as a Spanish practice session instead of a stupid ass crash course. So then he says, if you really want to be helpful, you should give the crash course in Guarani. We hear it often when we go to our rural project site. And that's what I remembered. I, I, I do have a friend who went there last year. And yeah, he was telling me how when, when the, 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 they went off the city, when everybody went off the city, all they heard was the indigenous language of Guarani, which is it's spoken by four or five million speakers in Paraguay. Yeah, basically everybody in the country speaks it to some degree besides Spanish. And yeah, that was the line that really got me in the email. If you really want to be helpful. Of course I want to be helpful. I run Spanish friggin' triangle. So I said, hey, you know what? As of right now, I'm watching YouTube videos of the one on the alphabet. It's pretty straightforward. I'm looking at how the grammar works. Also pretty straightforward. I can make it happen. I'll learn it over the weekend and I can make it happen. Besides, it, it doesn't even have to be fluent one on need, just basic phrases, like whatever I usually teach in the Spanish crash course, like greetings, numbers, how to order food. Yeah, basic phrases instead of Spanish, I just teach them in one on need. So, I'm gonna read the, the, the email that this guy sends. Gilberto, all this sounds pretty rushed. It's not the way to offer high quality training. Frankly, it sounds like you need to say that you are helping. What do you use to evaluate your workshops? How do you know that the participant learns whatever it is that you want him or her to learn? To what extent do the participants find the workshop interesting and worthwhile? Do you have an activity or lesson plan for what you will do? Yeah, listen to this. What data do you have to show that whatever you teach in these workshops is used once the participant arrives in the host country? Are there better ways to help someone acquire the Spanish you think you can deliver in your crash course? Typically, crash activities are like studying for a final. You pump up your mind for a one and only effort, then within days, forget 50%, and within weeks, forget another 40%. What for? When I told him that, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your horses, pal. And the first thing I told him was, oh, Spanish Triangle, like, we're an informal practice session. We're not Spanish class. We're not qualified to teach. It's just, uh, we're just giving the opportunity for people to come and practice their Spanish. And then I answered each one of his questions. 
like, yo, I asked for feedback and I have no data to show this, but I would assume that since we cover basic phrases, anyone who wants to practice Spanish on the locals will eventually use them and so on and so forth. So he said, fine, you can show up later this evening at so-and-so room. Ay, ay, ay. So get this. I show up to his room. We shake hands. And the first thing he tells me, say something in what in, say something in what I need. So I, so I told him, I can tell you the alphabet. <laughs> Which wasn't a lie. I... Okay, I'm going to go off on a linguistic tangent, because Baranese is a pretty cool language. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool language to learn. They have, uh, like, besides the uh, A, E, O, U, the, the vowels, they have what are called nasal vowels. You let your nose do the work, basically. So instead of A, you go A. E, 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 O, O, U, O. Oh, also, 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 uh, the Y... The sound the Y makes in Guarani is not the same uh, is not the same Y as in Spanish. It's like a uh. <laughs> or if you want to go nasal, you go uh. <laughs> they use base five instead of base ten. Uh, the number system is pretty practical, I think. They don't use articles. It's not a gendered language like Spanish. Uh, they use subject verb objects. It's a it's a pretty straightforward language. Uh, I think the, the only tricky parts are verb conjugations. Uh, they use what are called postpositions instead of, instead of prepositions. And besides that, it's just, once you get the grammar down, it's just a matter of learning the words. Wow, I digressed. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I went to this class, I gave the spiel, I gave him the imitation, and they'll... I go to the class, I give them the invitation, and they all looked a little bit intrigued, I guess you could say, uh, when I said that I would reframe it as a Spanish practice session, as well as it, uh, throw in an introduction to what I need. And I also said, hey, this will be a learning experience for me, as it will be for you, but it can be done. We'll do this together. I, I will say that I am a little bit nervous because... <laughs> I'm literally starting from the ground up. I am by no means qualified to teach the language, but someone's gotta do it. Someone's gotta do it, and that someone's gotta be me. Oh my god. I've never gotten into this kind of pickle. Oh, well, see what happens. Have a good one. Take care. Kick ass. I'd say the outro and what I need, but I can't. <laughs> I can't yet. I can't 